OSF projects are a very flexible tool that can be used essentially throughout the entire research lifecycle. We talk about your planning, your conducting, your reporting, um, whether you're analyzing your data or you are planning out a hypothesis, OSF projects are a really great way of kind of getting that started. I would describe OSF projects as a really, really great way of creating project management around specific levels of a research initiative. Um, so if you think about how you organize your research projects in your files, your folders, in your own storage providers, you typically have some sort of hierarchy. Uh, top level, you could have you know, your research lab, uh, but then you have you know, a folder for a research initiative, a research initiative to a grant project, something like that. And then inside of that, you have additional folders. Um, this just gives you an opportunity to create a, you know, a project management idea for each one of these folders where you can share and coordinate with colleagues, whether you're creating a hypothesis all the way through um, you know, establishing your protocol. Now, on the OSF, that kind of looks a little bit interesting, where we have kind of this parent-child structure of uh, projects. It's almost like uh, one of those nesting dolls type of ideas, where at the top level, you have a OSF project, where this is the example of your, uh, you know, your project level, a major one. Um, but then you have sub-projects, where on the OSF, those are called components. So here you'll see, you know, main title for the main one. Um, but then I've created components for each one of these sub projects. Um, and that kind of works in that same structure. In each one of these components, you will see uh, a section for hypothesis, data collection, protocols. Um, those components really help you organize your structure. And it also helps you kind of work around um, some storage restrictions as well. Uh, I'm actually gonna go back and I'm gonna show you a little bit about how that works on the OSF. So if I'm gonna create an OSF project, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to osf.io. I'm going to click on the create new uh, project. Before we get going, I want to talk about our dashboard really quick. Uh, this is a great way for you to quickly look through all of your projects. So I have a ton of projects on the OSF. Um, and if I'm going to look for any of my resources, my things, all I need to do is go to osf.io, look at our dashboard, which is right down, search for what I want based on you know contributors or the title, uh, and it'll pop it up very quickly. So it's a very great way of kind of expediting your work. Anyways. To create a project, you want to start with creating a new OSF project. This is the green button that's here. Click this. Uh, this gives me the opportunity, it's a pop-up window, uh, to show what title I would like. So I'm just going to put uh, test project. Again, these affiliations are associated with OSF institutions. I'm going to remove those. Uh, storage locations. Uh, this is very important, especially if you are in you know, different regions of the world. Uh, we offer four different storage locations. Now, don't look for your particular country. Think about regions and what you're working on. The, re the point of this is to really get around storage restrictions based on region of the world. So like say the EU, they do have uh, how restrictions on how data can be used and stored. One of the important ones that you can do is you could store your work in Germany. Uh, and that will really help you get around some of those storage restrictions. Uh, in our case, I'm just gonna say this is stored in the United States and click create. I have the option of working here or going to project. I'm gonna to go to project. Awesome. So now uh, this is my test project. Uh, all test projects, when they come in, they are immediately private. Um, I have the option of making this public or private at any time. Um, and again, I can delete this at any time. That's why I'm doing a little bit more of a demo here, but it provides a lot more flexibility than registrations where registrations, they can only be withdrawn and your metadata still remains, uh, whereas project can be completely deleted and no one will ever know exists. Uh, title up top, all you need to do to change it is click the title uh, and make the edits and click the green button. Uh, for contributors, so contributors on the OSF, this is a great way of kind of collecting all of the people who are associated with your project into one place so that you can all work on something at the same time. To add a contributor, all I'm going to do is go up to the top here. I'm going to click on the plus button. And I'm going to search for a person. Now, in this case, I'm going to search for my colleague, Eric Olson, who might not even be here, but that is okay. I'm going to click and add him as a contributor. Now, I have a couple of different options here. Uh, I can add him as a read and write contributor, which basically means he has the right to read and write on this project, but he doesn't really have the right to create. Uh, uh, he 
it, it kind of restricts some of the different things. Um, I don't really have enough time to get into it. So maybe one of our uh, product people can help and send out some of the differences in the permission levels. And that's something you need to evaluate as well. Um, but uh, I'm going to add him in this case as an administrator. Say you are in a situation where you are a lab manager, where you're on a ton of different projects, but you're not necessarily on the byline of those projects. You are not on the citation. Um, you can actually remove that person um, from the byline, but they can still participate on the project by clicking this button of bibliographic contributor. I'm going to remove Eric from this, and I'm going to click add. Now, this will add him to the project. He is not a bibliographic contributor. So if I go back to the main project here, you will not see him on this contributor line. You will not see him on the citations here. Whereas if I go back and click on contributors again, I add him as a bibliographic contributor, save the changes, click save, go back to my main page. Suddenly Eric is now as a contributor on the byline and he's in the citations, which is fantastic. Another element I want to talk about is file uploads. Uh, the OSF is a storage provider, obviously, um, but one of the ways that you can upload files is really two, there's a few different methods, but I, I tend to prefer the drag and drop method. So on my desktop right now, I have a folder. I'm going to take this folder and I can drag it and put it directly onto the OSF storage folder, or I can go to the files page, which is located up here at the top, take that document and bring it all the way over here and also drag in and drop it in. Um, I'm going to go back to the main page and I'm going to drag and drop this in, which is awesome. Now, all files on the OSF have the ability to be versioned. So now if I am, say, on my document as that uploads, I can make a change as you guys are looking at my thing. I can make a change to this, to this document. And I'm going to click out. Make sure that that's saved. Yep. And I can upload it using the same title to this OSF project. The great news is, is that that now created only one version of that file that will pop up here. And you will see that version render here as the latest version. But if I go over here to the top right hand corner, I can look at versions, revisions, and I can see the original. Come on. And then the new version. Uh, this is excellent for, especially for those who love to send emails back and forth saying, hey, here's the latest version of this manuscript. And then suddenly you're losing track of what that latest version is. If you keep the same title and you just make changes, you can see every single revision that happens. Uh, next thing I want to talk about really quick is I want to talk about adding metadata again. Metadata is key for having people find your work and connecting your work. Uh, this is very similar to the registration metadata. You can add whatever resource type you would like. So say this is a book, a chapter, a data set, an event. Um, you can make any sort of those changes and log that in here. Uh, this will be obviously in English, I can make those changes. Um, and I can also add a description. Those are all things that people see when they're searching the OSF that'll help them find you quicker. Again, uh, privacy settings, uh, you can make this public and private at any time. Um, if I say am a private document, all to share a private version of my uh, project with someone else, all I would do is click contributor. Say they are not a contributor and I don't want to add them to the byline of this project. All I would do is go to view only links. That is the same process for registrations. Um, if I click here, click add, I have the option of anonymizing the template for our project, and also sending out a version of this. This will create a URL for my private project that is anonymous. I'm going to copy this here. And one time, I'm just going to pop it in here. I can also send it to all of you here, where you'll see an anonymous version. So all the contributors on this are anonymous. Um, now, note that this doesn't anonymize any of the files that are associated with work, but it does help you share your work with funders or um, anyone that needs to peer review your work that does not need to see who actually is the person who's running your project. One thing quickly I want to talk about is add-ons. Um, so we know that there are 
so many different tools out there uh, that come to research. Um, so we have citation add-ons, um, storage add-ons, um, and the idea being that you can connect any of these different tools that you use, so say Big Share, GitHub, uh, Google Drive, and you can connect them to your OSF project. So to give you an example, I'm going to go to Google Drive and I'm going to enable that connection. Now it's very important that you go through and read how this actually works on the OSF and what that two-way connection actually looks like. So I'm going to confirm it. This will create a successfully changed and it will create a pop-up down here at the bottom where I can configure my add-on. I'm going to import from my uh, Google account. Click import. And this will give me basically a rendering of all of my different files that are on my Google Drive account. I'm going to click the test one because that's the one I've set up for this. And I'm going to click save. You will see a little link down here that says successful. The file has been added to your content. I'm going to go back to my main homepage here. And down here at the bottom where that file tree was, you will see you know, the original document that we uploaded to the OSF storage versus the Google Drive storage. Now. One beautiful thing that I want you all to remember is that anything that is stored outside of the OSF, so say I connect it to a Google Drive, an Amazon S3, anything like that, that does not go against your storage restrictions on an OSF project. Uh, on an OSF project, if it is private, it is five gigabytes. You have five gigabytes max to put on one of these OSF projects. Um, but if it is public, you have 50. But anything that's stored on your Google Drive or external storage provider, that doesn't go against that limit, which is really a great way of kind of working around that system. Um, additionally, every component that you create will have its own five gigabyte, 50 gigabyte storage limit. So you can, in theory, have more and more and more. Uh, now, uh, one other thing that I really wanna point out, a um, couple more, uh, recent activity. If you're an admin, you have access to seeing all of the changes that happened. So you can look back here and see them when I added the COVID document, I uh, added a different test, I connected my Google Drive. Um, you could see the timestamp version of all those things. Now it's not the same as registration, but it does show the recent activity and helps someone say at a PI level, coordinate with everyone else and see what's going on. Another aspect I really want to point out here is your wikis. Uh, your wiki is basically a blank template for you to do anything you want. Uh, it is a text box. You, I've seen people use it to coordinate between team members. I've seen people use it as a syllabus if they're using an OSF project to run their course, or I've seen lab managers use it as a way of ordering products. Um, it's essentially a way of just coordinating with your team members. And it's also versioned, so you can see all those different changes as well. Make sure to add a description, a license to share how you want people to use your work. Um, and again, if you wanted to add, say, those sub projects, those components, you're going to be looking here at add component or linking an existing project. And the process will be essentially the same um, as creating a project. I can add the contributors from my current project. Um, and I can also add the tags, but every one of those uh, sub components will link back to this main component and it'll be found here. Thank you.